Hello everyone, welcome to Vicar John Ministries. I'm Pastor John Berg, Vicar John, and this is our weekly worship service. And I thank you so much for joining us. I know you've got busy lives, and I'm, I praise the Lord that you can take some time off and just praise the Lord with us for just a little bit. Uh, you can find us under uh, Facebook and YouTube under Vicar John, and our website is vicarjohn.com. It goes on the top line, and it should take you right there. You can pause at any point of the service and play music that you like, your favorite music, uh, hymns, praise hymns. Today, some suggestions are, Blessed be the tie that binds, he leadeth me, and Savior like a Savior lead us. Savior like a Savior lead lead us. Uh, so also in a moment we're going to stop and have prayer and please please uh, remember to, to do this uh, uh, to go into some prayer personal prayer time because as soon as you think you don't need prayer is when you need it the most. So please remember that. Our title for today <clears throat> is called Herding Sheep. Herding Sheep. Should be kind of interesting I hope and uh, so that's our announcements and everything. <clears throat> now we'll have the ringing in the hour worship. Let us open with a word of prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, and we love you. And we just ask that the words of my, no, the, the words of my mouth are your words, Lord, but we're going to do that again in just a minute. We just ask that you anoint us with the Holy Spirit, Lord. And if there's any bad spirit, just cast them right out. And we just thank you that we're always able to come to you like this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just as a little sidelight, as I'm praying and making a mistake uh, like that, I was at a service uh, 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 yesterday, and and uh, and the uh, pastor really made me feel at home because he made three three big mistakes, and, and of course he stopped and corrected each and every one. But and that's what we have to do because we're only human like the rest of you. And, and uh, but it made me feel kind of kind of a little better because I know I make lots of them. So anyway. Um, that's our opening prayer. Our thought for the week is this. God won't ask you how many promotions you have received. He will ask you what you did to promote others. God will not ask you for what promotions you have received. He will ask you what you did to promote others. Wise words there. So uh, anyway, our call to worship today is a pretty famous one. It's uh, uh, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. You, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise the Lord. Uh, now we come to our prayer time, and uh, of course this is a time when we have, uh, I want you to think about God moments too, and where you've been, uh, what you've been doing this week as far as uh, honoring God, talking about God, thinking about God wherever you go. And that's very important, people. You don't have to do much, but you do have to do some of the little things like acknowledging God. Uh, people will, will not stop you. They will wonder, what do you have that they, they want? And so remember to do that, all, all things. So anyway, we're going to start today with a prayer confession, and then we'll go to our, our usual prayer. So pray with me. O merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, O Lord, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please push the pause button. O gracious Lord, thank you. We have been forgiven. 
by your gracious love and, and, and generous mercy, Lord. We just thank you that you forgive us for the things that we do, Lord. As we uh, look out into the world, Lord, we... We find it's a mess, Lord, and it's just getting worse. And, and that's so hard for, for us to understand is why does it have to get worse? And, and you have told us in the Bible that it will get worse. And, and, uh, and what we need to do is to, to face this with the joy that you have, the joy that you, you show to everybody, everybody in every situation, Lord. Just help us to do that. Help us to be more like sheep, Lord, and you are shepherd, Lord, and we will follow you to the ends of the world. Help us to do this and help us to think like this, Lord. We just thank you for the love you give us all the time. Lord, today we'd like to hold up some people. We'd ask that you bless them in ways that are pleasing to you. And we're thinking of the hurting and poor, wherever they may be, Lord. Uh, we're thinking of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, our leaders in this country and throughout the world. We're thinking of our troops, Lord, wherever they may be. We're thinking of our communities, Lord. As, uh, as uh, it's getting to be springtime and it's getting to be nicer out and, and uh, lots of things are happening, Lord. Lord, there's lots of people that we have in our minds, Lord, and we ask that you address in each and every need uh, and uh, uh, special uh, blessings go to John and Lexi uh, as they were married yesterday and, and uh, just be with them uh, oh, and uh, in their life together. And there's many more, Lord, and we thank you that you address each and every one of these, Lord, in, in only the ways that you can, Lord, which makes you God. And we praise you and love you as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading today, our scripture reading today, comes from John uh, 10, verses 11 through 18. John 10, verses 11 through 18. And Jesus is talking here, and he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as a father knows me and I know the father, I lay down the I just as just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not in the, in in this pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own of accord. I have authority to, to lay it down and authority to take it back up again. This command I received from my Father. The words of God for the people of God and all God's people would say, praise be to God. Let us pray. Well, gracious Lord, we thank you so much for all that you do. And we just ask that the words of my mouth are your words and they fall upon open ears and minds and especially open hearts. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. There are I think that there are many great ways or aspects of working with young people, our students, uh, that I miss. Um, I have ideas that I never thought of about before, um, and they, they come up with new ones. They have more energy than I can ever remember having. Uh, they have questions about things that I take for granted for many years, and they have questions about things that I know nothing about. I love questions where I don't know the answer because we can discover the answers together. But probably the best part of being with our young people uh, was, was that I got to see all the rules that they would try on. They'd ask themselves, who am I? Sometimes they see uh, someone and they try to be like them. They try to be just like them or they'll try to be like a hero figure or some maybe not so hero-like. Uh, when... 
when we would break from confirmation and youth groups for, for the summer, I would, I would not always know what role they might be trying on when they came back in the fall. And, and this is okay. This is the way it is. Uh, this is how they learn about who they are. Some young people learn right away who they are, and others, well, it takes a little more time. Uh, but no matter what, we will always love you. We will always love them. You will always have a home here with us. Last week we asked the question, who is Jesus? Right? Today we will continue to explore this question as we take a look at what the Apostle John has to say about it. And by the way, what he says is good for all of us and not just young people. Uh, I think we need to know a little bit about uh, sheep uh, because uh, God is a shepherd and, and we are the sheep, so we should know a little bit uh, more about them. Uh, I, I think we all kind of remember the one where if they are tipped over on their back, they cannot get up again. Uh, Joseph Rogers reminds us that if, they, if their wool gets dirty, there's no way for them to clean it. Most animals will shed hair, but not so the sheep. Also, sheep are absolutely, uh, <clears throat> have absolutely no way of defending itself. They can't do that. So, they, so far, they are dirty and defenseless, and they're also uh, very dependent. Uh, these animals require more care than any other animal. Finally, they are what I consider to be dumb. Uh, if they are left to themselves, they will soon destroy themselves. Uh, we raised a few head of sheep uh, on the farm when I was young, and I always thought that they were about the dumbest animal ever created, and that's just a personal opinion, okay? Anyway, I hope we can begin to see that, the, uh, that sheep need someone to take, care, to take care of them. They need a shepherd, okay? Now, the first thing that Jesus tells us in this reading is, I am the good shepherd. <clears throat> to us in modern America, this seems like a pretty straightforward remark, you know? But to the Pharisees and people listening to this, this statement was blasphemous, okay? Did you see the term I am was a term that God used to refer to himself. We read about this in Exodus uh, 3.14 when God is talking to Moses. In other words, <clears throat> Jesus is referring to himself as God, okay? Not only that, but he refers to himself as God three times in just these few sentences. Whenever Something gets, remember, whenever something gets repeated three times, it's very important to pay attention, okay? As a matter of fact, in verse 30, Jesus says, I and the, and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. I, I mean, it really doesn't get much clearer than that, I don't think. Uh, there are many places where Jesus refers to himself as God, and he does it in a variety of ways. Now, this is one of the places where he just comes flat out and tells his listeners that I am the great, uh, I mean, he is the great I am. I get that right. Uh, he tells us uh, that he and the Father are the same, okay? He's telling us he's God. It's very important for us to understand that Jesus is God and not just someone that has some warm, fuzzy thoughts, okay? He is real and he is forever. Uh, we have to remember this because uh, uh, this is getting to be quite a country we're living in. I don't even know what it's going to be like when our children get to be my age. Even right now, I have a hard time to share my faith with people without some sort of interference. People will tell me that I can't say this or I can't say that. They tell me that I have to be sensitive to all sinners and not tell them that they are sinning. By the time our kids get to be in their 60s and 70s, people will probably be put in jail for their beliefs or, or what I'm saying today. When, I, when all these things happen, and they are beginning to happen now, remember that Jesus is the great I am, okay? He is God. Turn to him for any and all things. He has won the war, and we just have to weather the, uh, these battles. Jesus is also good, okay? Jesus refers to himself as the good shepherd, okay? In Matthew 19, 17, Jesus said that only the God, the Father, is good. All good comes from him, okay? If Jesus is referring to himself uh, here in John as being good, then once again, he's saying what? That he is God. 
He says all this in one sentence. This is almost enough to incite a riot with the Pharisees. They are ready just to kill Jesus right on the spot. Have you ever noticed how angry people get when you bring up Jesus as God? I've had people who refuse to talk to me uh, uh, again because I love Jesus and I talk about it. Mostly this happened before I became a pastor. However, this has also happened in, in our communities and in our churches. People ha uh, have left because I talk about Jesus as God, okay, and not some piece of putty that you can mold into the God that you want. Jesus is a real deal, and he w won't be changed just because we pass a few laws or make changes in our churches as to what we think is right. Jesus Christ is always right, and we'll always, always find the truth in the Bible. Finally, I get to the last word of the first sentence, the, uh, shepherd. Okay, shepherd. This could be one of those services where I could just go on and on all the time. Okay. Anyway, we really don't have shepherds in America anymore. It's, it's uh, really hard for us to know what this is all about. Uh, this was an occupation where, where these men would watch the flocks of sheep all the time, 24-7. They lived with the sheep. Uh, I have already mentioned some of the things they had to do in order to keep the sheep safe. So the sheep need a shepherd. Uh, then the question becomes, why in the world uh, are we referred to as sheep and Jesus as our good shepherd? I mean, hey, look at us. We're intelligent, right? Humans have come a long way in, 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 the, dis, uh, in, the, in discoveries in, in medicine and mechanics and just about anything and everything except emotions. Uh, emotionally, I don't feel we are any more advanced than we were at the time of Jesus. And besides all of that, if, if we get tipped over on our backs, hey, we can get up again. There's really no comparison between us and sheep. Or is there? You may not like all the comparisons that I'm about to make, but just bear with me here for a moment or two. First of all, like sheep, when we get dirty, we have no way of cleaning ourselves. Uh, people go about their lives sinning here and sinning there. It isn't too long before sin begins to take over their lives. It isn't too long before we don't view it as sin anymore. It becomes our lifestyle. And when it becomes a lifestyle, we try to stay in it as much as we can. When we stay in it as much as we can, we become buried in sin. There is no way that we can get clean by ourselves. Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, comes along and will save you if you come to him. Sometimes, or maybe I should say most of the time in our modern world, we have been buried too long and we don't want a way out of our sin. It doesn't make any difference how much happier you would be with Jesus. It doesn't make any difference if you're going to have an infinitely better life with Jesus. Satan has closed your eyes and ears to the truth of Jesus and people will not listen to the truth. This is why I think we live in such, such a, a sad world. For the most part, we are dirty. We don't even know it. We are dirty and we don't even know it, and we like to live in our filth. Uh, the next way we are like sheep is that we are defenseless. Uh, you might think that maybe I'm a little crazy here. After all, we, we have the strongest country in the world, so we must be able to have some sort of defense, right? Uh, we have also been raising our children to be bigger, stronger, smarter than ever before. We really don't have a problem anymore, uh, don't have problems anymore, because the government will take care of us. You know, as a matter of fact, our government wants to run every facet of our lives. So we are very strong and, and we have defenses. But what happens when the outer part of us is strong and the inner part is rotting away. Okay, have you ever stopped to think that maybe the devil wants you to think that you are so strong? This is his plan because he is the great deceiver. You are only as strong as you are able, uh, as you are on the inside. Okay, you're strong on the outside, weak on the inside, you're weak. Okay, we can defend and take care of ourselves somewhat from other people. However, there is no way we can defend ourselves against Satan. He silently creeps into our lives and starts to take over. It's only by calling on Jesus Christ that we can defeat him. Satan is a monster, an absolute monster that will devour you if, 
as if you are a little sheep in a pasture against a big fierce wolf. All our defenses rely on Jesus Christ. The third thing we mentioned about sheep is how they're totally dependent on the shepherd. The shepherd must provide food, water, shelter uh, <coughs> from, the, uh, from the enemies or the sheep will not survive. In the same way, we are totally dependent on Jesus for everything of this world. He provides us with abundant water. All we have to do is figure out how we're going to use this water and we're set. If we look around outside, God has provided all the plants and animals for our well-being. All the various types of life are for us. And if that isn't enough for you, just think about how all these things are interconnected, okay? This world is an amazing place where everything is interconnected with everything else. Created by who? Our God who loves us so much. Oh, he loves you so much that all of this is just for you and for all of us. Whether you want to admit it or not, you are totally dependent on God for everything that you have and do. Finally, we get to the fourth thing that Joseph Rogers tells about uh, sheep, and this is that they are dumb. Uh, he said that the sheep will destroy themselves if left to their device, devices. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and say that we are that dumb. However, I have to wonder just how smart we really are at times. Uh, remember how I said earlier we have made improvements in, in lots of things except uh, in our emotions. I think that our emotions keep us from using our brains. One of our greatest feats is that we brag about our ability to be able to kill, kill everyone in the world a hundred times over. You know, what in the world are we thinking? Are we absolutely insane? We have television shows that show us all kinds of truly grisly, weird ways of killing each other. And then we wonder why our children are going on. And we wonder why we have so much violence in our society. We hold our legislatures in high esteem if they can lie and cheat the rest of the country as they bring home bacon to us. Maybe I was wrong, and I should use the term dumb here, because it's very obvious that we are not that smart. The only people who have a chance at happiness in this world and survival are the people who know Jesus. Uh, you can become smart uh, if you you can become smart if you go and pray to Jesus every day. Uh, you can improve all parts of your life if you just read your Bibles every day. Jesus made us so we can be in contact with Him all, at all times. There, there is no way to to, uh, to a better life. This is the only way. The only way to a better life is through Jesus Christ. So far. I have only talked about the first line in verse 11. About the only thing I have left uh, time left to talk about today is that the shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. When the sheep get into trouble, it is the shepherd who saves them or fights their battles for them. This is exactly what Jesus has done for us. We are not deserving of anything that we have. We are covered with dirt and we are filthy. Jesus tells his disciples that he will lay down his life for all of them and all of us. He is the good shepherd and that is what he does. I need to, we need to remember that as individuals, we need to remember this as individuals and as a church. One of the ways we uh, have to remember all that Jesus has done for us is when we take Holy Communion, okay? Uh, Jesus uh, told us uh, at the Last Supper to do this. This is what we do in remembrance of Him. The next time you take Holy Communion, I would like you to take some time out, okay? And just think about how needy a person you really are, okay? And think about how much you depend on Jesus for all you have. Then thank Him. Thank Him and thank Him for your life and all that's in it. You see, Jesus didn't do these things so we could just remember. He did that, these things so that we could go out into the world and act just like him. You are to tell others what he has done in your life. This is your story. Tell your story. Tell others about it. This is the only way that I know uh, uh, of us as how we are ever going to change this world about us and get it back on the right track. Tell your story. 
Jesus loves all of us, but he especially loves you. You, come to him and be faithful to him. He wants you to talk to him, and, and he wants to talk to, you, talk to him at all, at all the time. Go to him now, and talk, and listen. Jesus loves you, this I know. And thank you, Jesus, for first loving us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we, we praise you, Lord, for this love that you give us, and it's just there all the time. Help us to grab onto it, Lord, and, and, and talk about you and, and give this love to other people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes our worship for this week. I thank you for being here. Now for the benediction, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may his face shine upon you. As you go out into this wonderful, wonderful world he made just for you, spreading his great love and joy. Go in God's peace. And amen. <laughs>